In this video, we tackle two of the most common problems people have when mixing. One, how not to clip your two bus once and for all the right way. And second, how to set up your two bus compressor at the beginning of the mix, no matter the genre, and then mix into it and never worry about levels or headroom. Let's get to the video. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mix Best TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, please check the info box down below for my mixing courses on Pro Mix Academy, free plugins, special discounts, and offers. And if the videos are helping you, you want to support the channel. But most important now, if you want access to the exclusive members only content, hours of in-depth mixing and mastering videos and full courses. Click the join button down here or link in the description to see all the perks of becoming a Mix Best TV member, which includes mix consultations with me via Skype or email. All right, two birds with one stone in this video. I hope this will be the definite video on the subject. How not to clip your two bus, your mix bus, your master fader, call it the way you want. While achieving that is not as difficult as some people might want you to think, it's also not as simple as turning down your master fader, which is asinine. Uh, regardless the bit depth you're using, 24, 32, that's not the right way for so many reasons. And I explain this in all my gain staging videos. So if you're interested in that, go watch those videos. And it's also not as simple as slapping a brick wall limiter on your master fader, that is also wrong for so many reasons. What you want instead is to set your gain stage right and start your mix with healthy levels. Never worry about headroom on your two bus, never clipping tracks, never clipping groups. And to be able to set up your two bus, your master compressor at the beginning, not to avoid clip, but for tone and glue, and then mix into it. Usually when you receive tracks for mixing or export, import your stamps, levels are all over the place like this. Everything is clipping, the master fader is already 4.8 dB, almost 5 dB over, and we can't hear anything, it's already a big mess. I'll show you how to go from that to this with just gain. Okay, keep in mind that there's no mixing whatsoever, no EQ, no filters, no effects, no compression, nothing. This is just level. So this difference alone should be pretty eye-opening. Let's see what I did, because the only thing I did is setting my gain staging. You start with the kick drum, that's usually where I start. And simply turn it down by 6 dB in this case. Then add the snare. Turn it down a couple of dB here, all right? Overheads. A dB reduction. Toms, I already set up a gate for them, so. Another A dB down, same for the tom number two, same thing. All right, the tambourine came in super, super high level. 18 dB down, and you have already a balanced drum. Without. Let's take a look at our master fader with and without these. So, without. We already gained headroom, we have more level available, and let's keep going. We have just one symbol reverse here, it's not that much. Another ADB down. We have a loop and a drum reverb, which are at the end of the song in this case. Let's just do with them without these two. This was kept the same level. The reverb drum turned down by 5 dB. So you see, I'm doing my rough mix just using the trim, the input level on the SSL channel. You can use any trim plugin. I use this one because this is my default, uh, because I usually use the EQ, the filters, and the compressor too. So I use that one as my trim, as my gain staging tool. 
and all the uh, green tracks are drums, they go to the drum bus. And in the drum bus, I left everything as is. If you have a high track count, instead of reducing the level of each individual track too much, when you are happy with the balance and you reduce some level, you can reduce the level at the group stage. So in this case, in the drum bus out. If you want more headroom on your two bus, or like I said, you have many tracks to go, you can lower it down there. And you can do this for all various groups. For example, guitars, they go to this main guitar bus, and here you can lower it down if necessary. All right, let's keep going. Bass. All right, 4 dB down, and we have more balance. Electric guitars, we have three of them without. This alone rebalanced so much. I took uh, 12 dB out of the main left and right, and I took 8, 16 out from the center guitar. Same for the verse guitars. Let's hear them without. <music> 12 dB down, and we are a lot better than before. Lead vocal. I usually keep the lead vocal a little lower than where I want to hear it, even in the rough mix, because I know it's gonna, a lot of things are gonna happen on the vocals, parallel compression, parallel saturation, and all that. But now we are balanced. Background vocals, same things. We have three of these. You are the one All right, 12 dB down, and those are balanced again. On the main background vocals, I took 2 dB out because I didn't want to lower the level of each individual track. Like I said before, I can take away a little more on the group. Then we have O's and has here. Let's hear these again, with and without. We took... 12 dB out from those, and these were recorded hot. Instead of this. And these are 16 dB down. And again, if you need, you can turn the group down more, as much as you need to be comfortable to have enough headroom on your two bus. So let's unsolo everything. At this point, you could turn this one down, let's say like a couple of dB, maybe uh, it's just a little hotter and you don't want to go through all the groups and lower each one individually. Why can you do it now and not before? Because you're way below the clipping level already, okay? If I put this down to zero, we are a minus four on the two bus. We have four uh, dB of headroom which is a little shy. So you want to turn it down a little bit? You can, because you're still, you're still not clipping before this. But I still like better to go back and reduce maybe the groups and not to touch the master fader, but you can do it if you want to keep things simple. Now we are a minus eight dB of headroom on your two bus. You can do whatever you want. Now, when you have this balance, you can hear all the elements in a mix. They are pretty much at the level that you want them in the final product. Even if it's not a mix yet, uh, no compression, no EQ, no effects, nothing, you can set up your two bus. For this one, I would go for an API 2500. The settings, I can't give you numbers because it's stupid. Everyone who gives you numbers to throw at things in mixing is a stupid thing to do because they change every song based on what compressor are you using, 
uh, what is the side chain, what genre, uh, so many things. Me personally, nine times out of 10, use my Analog West audio mastering compressor here that is next to me, but also I have a lot of things on my two bus other than that. But we can see how I set this one up. It's a pretty popular compressor for rock. Attack is a 10, ratio four, and release a 0.1, so it's pretty fast. The type is old and the tone is a med. So the internal side chain is tilted like this towards that mid and high end and the low end is taken away from the detector. Hard knee, med could work too. Let me see which one is better. And then I would probably unlink up to 50%. It's rock and roll. So let's hear it. First rule, always, always level match with and without your two bus compressor. Actually, when I mix, I usually don't use makeup gain at all. I actually prefer to hear my compressed signal lower than without the compression. So I know for sure that not only I'm not fooling myself with level, but it has to give me the tone and the glue regardless, the lower volume. So I'm, maybe I make my life harder, but it's a safe bet and it's a good benchmark for you to learn how to use two bus compression. We can try another one. I have the Pulsar Mu here, which could be another choice. Again, without. Okay, it depends what you want for your two bus compressor. You want glue, you want snap, you want aggression, you want more saturation, uh, you want things to be softer, that will tell you which compressor to use. But once that's set up, how do you not touch the settings anymore? It's very simple because you already have a balanced mix at this point. From this moment on, every processing that you do with saturation, compression, EQ, parallel, needs to be level matched, which means if I start compressing this snare, I want the same exact level with and without compression. So I really understand, first of all, if my processing is making things better or just louder, and second, this way I will never run out of headroom on my two bus because no matter what, the levels are going to be the same. Now, of course, during the mix, some things are gonna get louder, are gonna get denser, are gonna get wider. There's gonna be something added to it. And that's the beauty of mixing into a two bus compressor from the beginning. Because at that point, you don't touch the settings. Sometimes you do, but it's like little adjustments, okay? but you don't touch the settings and you push, if you want, into compression. And maybe you start here with a couple of dB of compression. You the you make me feel like and you end up here. You the you make me feel like but that's all good. And you will master it with experience, but that's the beauty of mixing into a saturator, a compressor, a color box is that you make decisions as you go also based on how your two bus reacts and you will learn with time to make certain decision because you know you're gonna get a certain result by pushing the bass more into it or the vocals more so as long as you level match your unprocessed signals with your processed signals you will never run out of headroom on your two bus and the choice of pushing more or less into your two bus chain, whether it's plug-in or hardware, is gonna be an artistic choice as opposed to, oh shit, I'm clipping, I need to turn things down, you know, which is not the right way. And in another video, there's gonna be members only, so you have to join the channel to watch all the members only content. I will show you the Unity Gain Fader mix, okay? So how to get to your final static mix with all your faders or 90% of your faders at zero. And from there, you only have to worry about having fun with your faders and automation. Another very important thing, if you use any 
of the console-like saturation, you know, one on every channel. This is, again, the most important video that you can watch and share. For example, I use Heat, the saturator built in into Pro Tools, which is amazing. Dave Hill designed it. So for me, it's super, super important, the gain staging, because you can see... You can see the level, right? The light here is barely lighting up, same for the drum. But watch this, if I put hit pre, which means pre-insert, so pre-gain staging. You the you make me feel like see, my light in the two bus is already constantly lit, even at the first click. This way you can also control your saturation, your console emulation if you use them and do the gain staging first. Never worry again about clipping your two bus. And finally, being able to set your two bus compressor, like I said before, level match every processing, and you're good to go. This is it for this video. I hope it was useful. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like and share. Leave your comments down below. Let me know if you have questions. Check the info box for all the links. My Artist Bellas video, over 600,000 views already. Join the channel, become a member to access the real good stuff. All the in-depth mix and mastering tutorials have mix consultations with me. Follow Mixbus TV on Instagram and Facebook. There's a lot of exclusive content in there as well. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.